international footballer Jack Collison is now head under-17s coach of American MLS side Atlanta United. This is the story of the Premier League star's journey from playing to coaching in a new football culture. I suppose football's everything. From such a young age, I mean, fell in love with a game at probably five years old. Um, from that day, I took a ball absolutely everywhere. And obviously, as a young kid, had the dream of growing up and playing in the Premier League, um, something which I accomplished at 19. Uh, I'd say making my debut was a massive one at the Emirates, putting the West Ham shirt on and going out there and actually making that first team debut in the Premier League. Uh, scoring my first ever Premier League goal at the bowling in front of the West Ham fans was really special. But probably for me, the real standout was winning promotion at Wembley. Tough season in the Championship. Been working tirelessly. Didn't quite make automatic promotion. And obviously to go through through the playoffs was was incredible. And to have a day out at Wembley in front of 90,000 people was was pretty special. And so that was probably number one. And um, certainly brings back good memories now thinking about it. Jack's biggest influence on his football career was his dad, who got him into the game at a very young age. He was similar to me, absolute football nut. Um, would spend hours around the front room kicking a pillow about, a ball, breaking stuff, uh, down the park. So he, he sort of certainly developed that early love, early love for the game. Tragically, in 2009, Jack's father passed away after travelling to watch Jack play. But Jack has always remained positive and used football to get him through the tough times. So in terms of losing my dad, I found by actually going to training and, and going out there on a match day, I could lose myself and sort of immerse myself in football and, and just get away for that 90 minutes and, and forget about everything else that was going on. In 2009, Jack suffered a serious knee injury and faced another setback in 2016 when he was forced to retire early from the game. It's very dark, it's lonely. People try and make you feel part of the team, but you're not. You're very isolated, you're away from it, and you're helpless to help the team in difficult situations, and obviously on a match day. And I suppose the worst part is going in every day and seeing your mates out there having fun on the training pitch and improving and getting better. and just having a real good time and you're either sat in a physio room or on a bike or in a gym and knowing that you're a long way from, from sort of doing what you love. He found it sort of quite difficult at the time to talk about it um, because obviously it was like centred around a lot of emotion for him at the end of his career. I think I knew when it was the right time to step away also because it was just becoming too much and, and too much pain, too much of a burden and I was so far away from where I wanted to be. I found it tough to watch football for for probably a good couple of months, especially the West Ham games and, and seeing what was going on and yeah, it's horrible but in terms of growing as a person and developing coping mechanisms and put me in probably a really good position now as a coach, it, it certainly helped me along that sort of journey. I suppose there was the option to step away and sort of try something different or stick to what I've known all my life and obviously decided to stay in and around football, uh, around the coaching, some of the media stuff. And, I wasn't one to sit around and mope around for too long, so I had a little short period and then decided, right, I'm going to be the very best coach I can be. I'm seven or eight years ahead of my coaching journey than I would have been if I had a full career playing. I think he's done really well in staying inside of football and still being able to have that passion and just not being able to play. I think any player that stops playing for whatever reason, they've, they've got uh, tools that can help young players and other people become professionals. I think it's great that Jack's got the hunger and the desire to do that and to put that knowledge into practice. It's finding a way to put that into people uh, and it, it can take a while to find your feet as well. Uh, but I know he was, he's done a lot of groundwork in the West Ham Academy. The summer of 2019 brought about a brand new opportunity and a fresh start for Jack. Having managed youth teams at Peterborough and West Ham, he faced the big decision of leaving West Ham for a second time to join MLS giants Atlanta United in America. You can imagine it wasn't an easy, easy decision. I mean, I just jumped up from the under 16s at West Ham to the under 18s. So working with some real good players, the soccer school's going well, my kids are in school and obviously I'm at a club at West Ham where I've been for, for years. 
Alex and myself had sort of spoke about America a few years prior. So we spoke about it and we thought about it and we let it settle in and I think we got to the point where it was just now or never. The hardest thing that he found was leaving West Ham because obviously that was his whole life. So I think stepping away from that was a huge stepping stone for him. West Ham is obviously such a massive part of my life and not that I felt I'd accomplished everything I could but I, there was an opportunity in me getting comfortable at West Ham I think. I wanted to step out of my comfort zone and try something completely new and Atlanta came at the right time and to see the project, the building, the, the training ground, the facilities, the infrastructure and the vision that they have for the club, for me it was just exciting to be part of something brand new. I've always wanted to live in America. Um, my mum's American, so I've always kind of had that link to here. Our seven-year-old daughter has just taken it just by storm, just gone straight into school and made lots of friends and she's loving it. And then the baby's obviously too young to know that <laughs> what's going on. It was down to where the kids are going to have a better upbringing and I think that kind of swayed our decision. We wanted a lot of open fields and land and stuff for them to be able to play and I think, yeah, that, that was kind of what made us decide. It's a, it's a vibrancy. People, before I come, spoke about the diversity and it's incredible. All sorts of people, different backgrounds. So it, it's good. You can, you can go anywhere and, and just get away and you feel like you're in a totally different part of the world. In terms of life experience and experiencing something new, it's, it's been great and really enjoyable so far. Obviously, I'm over here to, to try and become the best coach I can be and to make my pathway on the, on the ladder over here as a, as a young MLS coach. He's a good lad, he, he fits right into the, the culture here. There's a lot of good guys in the academy. Uh, when I came here, you, you are the different person that's coming in. A big group of academy coaches as well, run by Tony Annan. And the, with us in the second team, we work pretty closely. So it's, it's important that you fit in. You do what it takes to fit in. And I think Jack's done just that. Doing a, a real lot of hours on the grass as well, so there's, there's different ways to get to the end result, whatever that is, and uh, I'm sure that Jack's in a great place and he's, he's learning from, from and with great people. Super passionate and he just wants to get the kids um, doing as best as they can. Seems to have just thrown himself straight into it and he's loving it, so it's been a good thing. I would say the kids are completely different, <laughs> completely different. Um, I'd say over here, tactically, they're they're very switched on. I'd say there's a real big focus on setting up teams and, and teams to win. There's a real competitive nature out, out here in the US. Maybe might be missing in England slightly because they're so protected and in such a bubble in the academies that sometimes maybe they're not pushed as hard as they could be. Whereas I'd say in England there's probably more of a focus towards finding that ultimate individual, that one within the 11 and kind of building your team and all of your focus around the one or two best players. and. For me, it's been great coming from that to try and get to that and try and find that happy medium in the middle where I feel I can be a successful youth coach and hopefully bring some good stuff to the club. I think he's quite strict as well from what I've heard. He's quite goes quite tough on them, but I think that's obviously what they need, so they all seem to like him, which is a good thing. I'd say maybe early on this group possibly struggle with the expectations that I put on them in terms of setting the standards and trying to make them realise what it does take to, to get to the next level, be it college, be it MLS, be it the USL. That for me, the, the early stage was really about just trying to get in and say, look, I'm here, we'll have fun along the way, but if you want to really be part of it, you need to be willing to work hard and, and when the time comes, you need to get your head down and, and sort of really focus and kick on. But standards surprised me. It's, it's, I knew it was going to be good from when I come over. I'm going to some of the big tournaments, you see there's 30 plus teams there. Good quality, well organised. I think it's strengthening year on year, it's very popular. Uh, I think people here are more aware of what goes on in different countries than they used to be perhaps with the games that are on the television. And there's no doubt the league's getting stronger every year. Uh, so it's a good place to be, it's a good place to learn as a coach. You can see what it means, they're, they're such a passionate bunch. and. It's funny, you walk around the local area in your Atlanta gear and people want to come and talk to you about the team and ask questions and they love it. And it's really interesting to see the types of players now that are being linked to, to sort of come over here, not when they're 35, 36, slightly younger players. Obviously Chikorito's just come over, which is a, a big coup for LA. You can see that there's certainly possibly going to be a pathway for these young South Americans 
now to sort of make the jump to the Premier League because they're good enough, they're young enough and they're certainly hungry enough to, to come and, and try and make the best of what they got. It's a club that's full of great people, uh, the quality is undoubted, it's a great place for players to come and play, supporters come and watch a team that's very vibrant. I mean you go down to the Mercedes Benz, it's, it's frightening, it's, it's, uh, going down there on a match day, it's just such a good energy around the place, everyone's happy, everyone's looking forward to the game, there's a real good buzz pre-match, the crowd are just nuts. <laughs> The mob behind the goal with the with the uh, with the drum, the seventeens, and that, uh, and they love it. They're passionate about it. They're, they're really proud of their home team, training ground. You can see the infrastructure there. They're not just building for instant success. They're they're trying to build something big for the future and trying to be not just leading in the MLS. They're trying to be world leading with what they're doing. The people they're trying to bring in, the way that they're, they're trying to build it organically. It's it's just really exciting to see and. The boys at the club have been great, especially Tony, I mean my boss, I think it was a big risk for him bringing someone in from, from England when he could probably had his pick from anyone in the MLS. Spent Thanksgiving at my boss's house, which is great for obviously Alex and the kids. It's important that, that Alex is also involved, I think, with other families and especially other wives who understand that there will be lots of travelling. The hours aren't very orthodox. I spoke about that that energy around the place and people wanting to get better and improve. There's certainly a big a big helping of that at Atlanta. A lot of the young academy staff want to get better and they want to kick on and it's a good environment to be around. Important for me just to try and find that line where I don't go too far towards trying to be their mate and I need to tell them that hey, this isn't good enough, or hey, we need more of that. The game moves so quickly now, they, they probably don't even know who I was. I mean, even back at West Ham, some of the boys, I'd only played in the, U the first team probably five years ago, and <laughs> I had no idea where I was. But then it's about your coaching, and it's about ensuring you're the very best coach you can be, and saying using your experiences from your playing career and the things you picked up, to try and be the best coach you can be because you can only live off that for so long. You know, it's about walking the walk with your coaching, making sure that your sessions are spot on, your game plans are, are right and you're giving these boys enough tools and the right tools that it takes to sort of progress, get better and get them where they need to be. For me it's about me now trying to repay them by getting these boys to the level they need to be, giving them a little tap on the back and kicking them on up the ladder. With Jack's under-17s competing in America's finest youth tournament, the Adidas Generation Cup, the pinnacle of the team's season, and with a chance to qualify for the finals in Dallas, three tough games in four days were in store, with New York City first up. New York City are a very good team and obviously they win a Man City group aren't they so they try and build from the back and they play a really nice brand of football but there's opportunities for us to go and press and try and win the ball high up. I'm a competitive person, um, it's, it's hard not to be competitive in anything so obviously I'm, I'm keen to win and obviously for the boys to, to play well and, and just have a good weekend. Jack's side battled well and managed to finish the game nil-nil. But with the game ultimately going to penalties, Jack's side lost 4-2. I think knowing what the group's capable of is it's just really disappointing not to obviously get the three points and start the weekend well and build a bit of momentum. But this happens and it's important they're a young group that they learn from it and next time they're in that position they make better decisions and obviously improve. With the team now unable to qualify, they would go on to restore some pride against Impact de Montreal, winning 3-0. We talk about finding a way to win, finding a way to win games. Okay, you dig in, big blocks, okay, big saves, big tackles. Proper fucking defenders, proper defending. And a bit of magic at the end, you get your third and put the cherry on the top. So really well done, I'm really pleased with that. For the final day of the tournament, Jack was unable to attend due to illness, with the team losing in a tight 1-0 defeat. It was always going to be a tough ask uh, for our boys to win three games in four days with the level of quality and the, the level of opposition. It's not the be-all and end-all. We're not going to come down on them and 
But what we are going to do is make sure it's important that they dissect it, review it, and we try and learn and try and get better because it is important for their learning that they recognise maybe one or two things in the earlier rounds or the earlier games that maybe they could have done better as individuals. The boys will learn from it, they dust themselves off and they're a young group, so 80% of them boys can play again at the, at the same age group, the same tournament next year, so it was certainly fair and well moving forward. In terms of trying to get the tactics right, the game plan right, and ensuring everyone's sort of doing their bit, it's, it's a really good experience for me. Ultimately for me, I like seeing the individuals kick on as well. The young lad Tyler Wolfe, who scored the first two goals, has been with the first team all pre-season. So that's great. Um, our left back who started the first game didn't play the second two because he's gone with the US national team. Uh, our centre back who was injured has just been spent a week with Man United. So little successes like that and, and making sure, yes, we're competitive as a team. Yes, we're doing the best we can. But ultimately, these boys are picking up what they need to pick up. They're, they're getting the right information and, and we're helping them as coaches and as people along their journey. Because for some of the American boys, which is slightly different, ultimately, they want to get a scholarship for college. My centre-back, Kobe Stu, for me, and I think if he's really honest, he's probably really focused on getting a full education, going to play at a competitive school, but it's a, it's a college route. And if I can be part of that journey, and at the end of the season he said, oh, I've got a scholarship to a, a great college, for me that's success as well. But now we've got a real good, bubbly, vibrant group, and a group I'm enjoying working with. Ultimately, I would like to manage in the Premier League. You look at them real top managers and the way they're tactical little tweaks, whether it's pre-game, the way they set the team up, or it might be a late substitution. And to see that, that really sort of inspires me and makes me want to be better. And I suppose the big thing for me, the biggest thing I miss is that, that energy and that buzz on a match day, walking out to the stadium and seeing the fans. And obviously to have that taken away, and not really get a full run at it. That's sort of still burning quite, quite bright within me. So I, I miss the pressure of a match day. So for me to get that real intense pressure, I need to be managing and coaching at the highest level possible. I think he would love to get to like a first team role, um, maybe potentially like a manager, manager job for like a first team. I think that's his kind of ultimate goal. It's funny, I go back and sit in a London stadium now and it's not so much watching the game. I find myself watching the manager and watching what's going on around it and just imagining what it would be like to be in front of that intense crowd and for me that would be a real dream to go back to West Ham and manage there one day. I think eventually the, the time will come over the next sort of two or three seasons where I'll be looking to, to kick on up the ladder and probably work with sort of more men's, men's football, senior football because then there is more pressure on the results. And then I suppose it's just about getting my head down and, and seeing where the journey takes me. And as I said, when that, when that bit of luck or that bit of opportunity comes, just making sure I'm completely ready and ready to go in there and sort of make my mark. I can definitely see us sort of staying here, but obviously it depends on what happens in years to come and if the kids want to go back or something. So, but yeah, I really like it. I want to really explore the American side of things and the MLS side and obviously be a part of this while it's growing and, and sort of see where that takes me because life can certainly change and your goals can certainly change at different parts and certainly now with the little one at school we, we want to get her through school so I'd say for the next sort of 10 years I reckon we're going to be out here and for me learning my trade and, and trying to be the best I can be.